In recent years, Nigeria has emerged as a powerhouse in Africa's creative and digital industry, igniting a wave of innovation and economic growth. With a population of over 200 million people, the country is teeming uh, with talent and entrepreneurial spirit, making it a breeding ground for creative minds. Now, from film to music, fashion, technology, Nigeria is proving to be a force to reckon with in the global digital space. Interesting sector, I must tell you. But for more on this, and let's know what's playing out and what we should expect. I'm being joined live in the studio by the Chief Executive Officer of Playhouse Communications, Mr. Tolu Onileri. It's a namesake. It's good to have you in the studio. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. Well, first, this sector, a lot is being talked about. And a happy new year. Let me say that to you too. Um, let's understand Nigeria's position in the entire creative and digital space. How well are we doing contributing to growth and development? Um, I think we've got a lot of potential. Um, and I think that if I can, I need to break it down into two parts. You've got to first of all look at the digital portion of it, which I think covers every single thing. Mm. And globally now, there's a lot more conversation around digitization. So that impacts on agriculture. It impacts on, as we say, creative. It also impacts on finance and everything. And that is huge potential. You can already see that with the importance that the new minister, Osun Tijani, has placed on that area of it. Um, the other part I want to talk about and spend a bit more time on is the creative economy. And that's covered by the Ministry of Arts and Culture. So right now, it's projected by, that by 2025, online creators will contribute about roughly about 5 trillion naira to the GDP. So lots of potential and lots of growth. And those are online creators. Then from a target point of view, the Ministry of Art and Culture is already targeting to, I think, about $100 million of contribution from the creative economy by 2030. And you can see the potential of that. It's so important that right now, I believe the ministers, even in Davos, having a roundtable focusing on that. So there's a lot, of, a lot of potential, a lot of growth, and an ability to, to impact. If you bring that down from the sort of like the big numbers and talk about the people, and you yeah. start to look at the impact of it, you'll see that um, from online creators, it's estimated that online creators, after six months of starting being a creator, are employing at least six people plus. Mm. So whilst everybody thinks you just pick up your phone and then you're off and you're going, the impact of it is it's the ripple, e the ripple effect. So as you start, you have a photographer, you have an assistant, and that potential as a job creation um, source, especially in this market where we are trying to achieve and trying to get more people employed, is huge. So lots and lots of opportunity in there if we can harness it. And I think it's, I mean, we talked about music, which everyone's already aware of, we talked about film, which everyone's aware of, but there's so many other areas that we can look at to grow and to impact, not just Africa-wide, but globally. You've been in this game for some time. 12 years is no joke. Yeah. How has it been waving through all of the challenges? Um, it's been interesting. And um, there's, a ch um, there's a Chinese curse of, you live in interesting, interesting times. So it's not that kind of interesting, but it's been interesting in the, to see the development over 12 years where I remember 12 years ago where we had you know, just 200,000 people online. To now we've True. got hundreds of millions. And Nigeria is in the top 10 countries globally with the most number of internet users. So the potential for it is huge. Um, from a business point of view or personal point of view, it's been, a game, it's been really game-changing. So we've moved from, I said, 200,000 to now, and especially, I think, pushed by the COVID and, and, and fast-tracked by the pandemic, everybody's now on digital. So you've got a lot more people spending time. Um, you've got Gen Zs who, are, who that's it. They're, they're earlier. They're, always um, on their phones. Always on their phones. <laughs> always, always on their phones. And that's what they've been born with. So there's a lot of that. And you see that big, that big change. From a business point of view, you see more companies appreciating the value that digital gives to them. So the measurability, the trackability, the fact that um, people have always said that, especially in advertising, 50%, I mean, there's a famous quote about 50% of my advertising works, 50% doesn't, I just don't know which one it is. Suddenly, digital is able to try and give you that insight. You're seeing more businesses move budgets toward that, it's knowing that the audience is there and knowing that they're able to see the return on investment what they spend. So it's, it's been good times. It's much, much interesting, but, but getting better. I would agree with you because even for television guys like us now, online is key. You know, we need to push content there too because 
we have the views. And, you know, <laughs> the more the views, the more the money we also make there. Interesting stuff. But tell us about this, your recent initiative. I read about it, and it's so interesting, the Story Hub by Playhouse Communications. Tell us more about it. Yes. Um, you said we turned 12 years this, um, in 2023, and as um, most agencies or most people, when, it, when those sort of anniversaries come up, you do a bit of soul searching, and you look at it and go, okay, what have we achieved? Mm -hmm. And we're grateful for what, where we've come from and where we are now, and we want to tell our story. And as we were doing it in an agency and putting that together, we suddenly thought, well, it sounded, it sounded interesting, um, if we don't mind me saying inspirational, and we thought this might give others who are out there who are looking for careers, who are looking for inspiration, looking for motivation, might give them the push they need to get themselves started. And so Story Story Hub was born out of that, that we had a story we wanted to share, and we were curious to see what other people's stories are. Um, we've had the chance to speak to people like Brother Shaggy, Jenny Frank, um, New Kid, Erica Kafo, and um, uh, Bush Kido out of, um, from, um, up north, who have told us their story, their journey as well. And it's been, I mean, if you look at it and look at the feedback, people have found it really inspirational. So Story Story Hub was created as a hub for Nigerians to share their stories. Um, unique. Our history has always been shared and told in stories. That's it. And so this ties into that. And Story Story Hub is hopefully a where, place where people can share their stories and share their good, positive stories about the digital creative economy and use that to inspire others and show them the way of what other people could do. So, yeah. So that's, that's interesting. So, and how have people been, how receptive have people been to that? Quite positive. I mean, it's been really positive. I mean, there's been, um, you know, the, you know the, 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 as you talk about online and, the trawlers and stuff, but it hasn't. Yeah. It's been really positive. Um, as we said, we've been able to speak to some um, content creators who've been gracious enough to share their stories, to share their, their journey, their path, and how that has inspired others and helped others. And so it's been, the feedback we're getting has been really positive. People are telling that the stories are inspirational, that this is what they want to do, that they've just been looking for how to get started, and suddenly they're beginning to see that, you know, this is how they can do it. You know, so you've got people up north, you've got people up south, and it's just all Nigeria-wide who are beginning to see the potential and the power that this offers them from a job creation point of view. It's been really positive. Hmm. Now, this, your strategy behind your presence, because you're doing pretty well, and um, staying on top is very important. I must say that, you know. Uh, so what plans are there for you to sustain your presence and to improve upon it? Um, I think that the, answer, the short answer is agile. I think that, um, as you've said it, even in the television industry, yeah, the way yeah. you've got to do is understand what trends are going on yeah. and move. Digital with, first. Thank you. I'm moving <laughs> the times. That's where we are now. So, <laughs> exactly. So as an agency, we've set up to be a one-stop shop um, to offer our clients the whole gamut of services, from creative to strategy, all the way to technology development. Mm. But what we've seen over 12 years is the requirements of our clients has changed. So from early days when they were looking for you know, build us a website. So now you're getting a lot more Internet of Things. So you've got um, one of our clients is MTN, and you've now, they were the first launches of 5G, and you're seeing a lot more Internet of Things coming out of that. So for us and for us to be still, stay relevant, to be able to offer our clients and, of, and be able to offer value, we've got to be agile. We've got to be on the ball, understand what the trends are going in, what trends are happening, and be ready to interpret them Look at how they can add value for our clients and how we can implement them. And that's it. So agile is the answer mm. for us. Challenges now. Let's talk about challenges. We all have challenges. <laughs> yes. Even Nigeria yes. has. Yes. But, you know, peculiar to your kind of uh, business, uh, looking at electricity supply, infrastructure issues and all of that. So but has it been? Even taxation. Tell us, some, tell us about it and how you've been able to weather the storm. I think, that. I mean, you said it rightly. I think that doing business in Nigeria or anywhere in the world has come, there are certain challenges that are standard across everywhere. So if I talk about electricity, the person who's selling um, um, soft drinks has that same challenge. Yeah. That's, 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 that I think is, applies to all of us. So yes, electricity is a problem. Um, within that, and one of the things we found was one of our main expenditures was on diesel which then causes problems, and then, you know, it's things like people, in the, people globally cannot, cannot, when you're trying to do a business plan and look at what your return investment is, they can't factor that in or understand that. So electricity has been a challenge. It's getting better, but we're still not quite there where we're able to know that 
for eight hours of the day when we're at work, we've got that, and we're able to do that, not yet there. More specifically about us has been um, two things, talent development and um, internet access. Talent development is this, is in a country where we've got 200 million people, um, where, you know, do you know who I am is, is fueled by the fact that we've all gone to university and things like that. What we're finding is this, or what we found was that the exposure and the appreciation, understanding of what digital could offer and how to um, apply that for our clients wasn't necessarily there. So what we've had to do is invest in our, in our people. Um, I'm always saying to my, and hopefully my guys who are hearing this and are going to attest to it, is our greatest strength as an agency is the people that we have because the expertise is what drives us, is what gives us the, the, the edge. So talent development is a, real, is a real challenge. And it's going to be as we try to compete globally and try to implement the potential of digital. We've got to, as an, as an industry, as a nation, as a country, invest in talent development where digital is concerned. That's been a challenge. Other one is um, internet access. That's always, that's, you know, um, we always had the problem where you know, um, the people we use, we, we've gone through a, a, a handful of internet prov um, service providers. First two months is great, and then suddenly everything drops off. I've got to say it because, unfortunately, I mean, you know, um, it's not as an advert, but my client is MTN, and they have helped in making things a lot better from internet, internet um, um, service, internet penetration. But I, 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 I'll, I'll stick to that. The other challenge, when I said two, there's one I missed out, which is regulation. Yeah, and it's, yeah very important. It's the, it is. It's the, um, it's, the unknown ent it's the unknown entity because you go to sleep today where the regulation that you have working, that you have to do is based on this. And without any notice or any, any, any warning, you wake up and suddenly things have changed. Um, and that is the big challenge. It's the big challenge where I think that I would hope the government will look at, look at the fact that to be able to do business, we need to be, we need to be able to understand what's ahead of us. Mm -hmm. As we go to sleep tonight and wake up, we need to be able to know what we're planning for. And then should things need to change, because that's just the way the world is, to, to know that we are going to be involved in the process. So I think probably the biggest challenge for us now is um, without sort of shooting myself in the foot and taking on the regulator, are the ARCON guidelines. And so that's, that's causing a lot of concern and a lot of, um, there's lack of clarity around it, but that sort of area of, of regulation. And if I've got time, I'll do the last one of economy. In, you mentioned right now, yeah, you mentioned yeah, earlier on that we've gone from 100, from 1,300 naira yeah, to yeah, one dollar. Talking mm -hmm. to somebody earlier, um, end of last year, who was saying that they were, they were planning based on, on their budget of 1,002, and that was pessimistic. And we're already talking 1,003. So it means that on a day-to-day -day basis, you can't plan. Yeah. So again, back to, yes, we talk about being agile, but you still would like to be able to project for the next three to the next six months to go, okay, this is what's going to come to, this is what we're going to pay on this, or this is what it's going to cost us to, to, to use the software. But you're just waking up each day, and that's changing. And so hopefully, as the government gets control of it, and we're able to then get more clarity, get more, um, more consistency, hopefully things will get, will, will settle down. I'm thinking about partnership now to strengthen your kind of business. What sort of partnership are you open to uh, this time that can help you scale up? I think we're op honestly we're open to anything. I think that I mean as an agency we work with clients and we our clients are always kind enough to talk about partnership with us. So we are used to partnering, um, and so it's almost that thing of they say you hold on to something mm -hmm. with an open hand. So we're open to partnership. We're open to the platform is there. Where there's an agency we service MTN, we service Tambic IBTC, Pernod Ricard. So we already um, Lucasaid. We already partner with certain big brands, but we're open to also partnering with content creators, we're partnering with other businesses, other agencies. I think that the challenge, the thing for us is about creating the environment. There's enough for all of us. And I think that the stronger, the bigger the environment is, the better for all of us. So we're open to partnering with anybody that's, that sees it, sees the service that we offer, the value that we hope to bring, and thinks that that would benefit them. Well, well the federal government seems to be harnessing the projected, expected resources from the digital space, digital, creative, just like the mining sector too, solid minerals. Government is putting an eye everywhere because it's time to diversify. 
the economy. Now, what will be your message? You mentioned him, uh, Bosun Tijani. Uh, I think he's in Davos now, of yeah. course, at uh, the uh, World Economic Forum now, you know, setting all of it for Nigeria. What would you say with regards to um, regulations that can help improve investment in your space? Thank you. Good question. Because um, I think that the key for us is this is we know that Nigeria is struggling economically. So we are conscious of that. I think everywhere globally is in that same position. Yes. That we would like to see regulations that are not focused purely on revenue generation, but are actually focused on growing the market. Because as the market grows, revenue will come. But if the regulations are put in place that kill us and kill the market, kill the potential, it's going to, it's going to affect the economy. As we grow, because the people that, if you're working, you have more money to spend, um, and online and digital creative economy has that potential. So we'd like to see consultation. We'd like to, to know that regulations are there for our best interest as opposed to revenue generation. And just that thing of like seeing that, yes, this is the long, the long path and that if we, are, if we partner with them and they're willing to partner with us, we will, see, we will get to the end of the tunnel mm. where the light is shining brightly, we hope. All right, we believe. In a few years, where do you see, where do you see your, 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 your organization? Um, somebody else taking over. <laughs> no, um, hopefully, so I think, plan exactly, right exactly, That's good. exactly, the gray hair. Um, no, um, I think that, I mean, as I said, it's, this is to be agile. Yeah. Is to, um, I think that we're really excited about the potential. I mean, we've gone, as I said, from 200,000 yeah, users yeah, to, really, now, really commendable. To, to now seeing people use, talking about metaverse, yeah. talking about AI, wow. seeing what the potential that can, yeah. what's, how it's going to change, yeah. change yeah. people's lives. Yeah. So really excited about what the future holds, hoping that we are there, that not just as, a, as an agency, but even as a nation, that we can contribute to that. Really excited. Mr. Tolo Nere is the CEO of Playhouse Communications. Thank you so much. Thank we hope to have me. you on the program again. Thanks for having me. All right, then. Well, we'll take a break. But when we come back, we'll shift our focus to Nigeria's growth prospects.